Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time around, it is WWF Betrayal for the Game Boy Color, released in the summer of 2001, or 2001, or whatever it is you want to pronounce these kinds of years. This game was developed by Way Forward, who are known for developing games that are not poopy. This was published by THQ, who have a history of publishing games that are poopy. Somehow, this ended up being a poopy game. Let's start a new game because all we can do is either start a new game or input a password to start off from a later point. And we have four characters to choose from. We have The Rock, we have Stone Cold Steve Austin, we have The Undertaker and his Biker Taker gimmick here, and we have Triple H. I'm going to go ahead and play as my favorite one from this time period, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Because why not? Game starts off with us as Stone Cold Steve Austin facing Triple H for the WWF Championship, because this still wasn't WWE yet. That wouldn't be until May of 2002. And we have the announcers, announcer and announcer, calling the action here. They couldn't even name drop Jim Ross or Jerry Lawler here. It's just announcer and announcer. I'm not sure why, but, well, they didn't. Trash can gets thrown at us. We get put in the pedigree. The Rock tells us to know our role. He would have also told us to shut our mouths, but, well, we're lying face down on the mat here. He runs away. Triple H leaps out of the ring. He says something. Then he leaves. And then we get back up. And it looks like we're in the house show of some sort because there's a fire extinguisher and a door and a bunch of people. And you can move around by using the control pad. B lets you kick, A lets you punch. And we start off by fighting off two crooked referees near the entrance ramp while we look at a picture of the rock. And if we beat these guys down enough, down to their last unit of health, we'll be able to put them in his finishing move. In this case, it's Stone Cold Steve Austin's Stone Cold Stunner. And as soon as we beat these two crooked refs up, we go to the next area, the locker room, where we meet up with Mr. McMahon. Turns out Mr. McMahon needs our help. But of course, Stone Cold Steve Austin being the guy that he is, doesn't want to hear anything from him. McMahon still wearing his evil face and only deviating from said evil face whenever he is raising his arms up in the air, wants us to rescue his daughter Stephanie, who apparently has been kidnapped. Oh boy, I'm being reminded of that Ministry of Darkness storyline from way back in 1999. That's another story for another time. And Austin wonders why he should trust Mr. McMahon and do this in the first place. Well, Mr. McMahon tells us that if we rescue Stephanie, we'll get another shot at the World Wrestling Federation Championship. And then he leaves. So yeah, move around the control pad, B to kick, A to punch. And if you double tap in any direction, usually left or right, those are the best ones to use for that, you can run. As long as you hold any direction on the control pad. If you roll your thumb on it, you'll still run in any direction you want out of the eight. I'm also punching lockers to try to find stuff. There are a few health replenishing items in the game. The apple is the worst, giving you only one unit of health to work to replenish. The drink with the straw gives us even a little bit more. Pie gives us even more than that, or keg, depending on how you want to look at it. And there's this yellow can that gives us like about half of a whole energy bar, and we get that, we'll get the most health replenished out of all the four pickups. 
And there's an apple there, and as you can see, only one unit of health. I didn't really like that. By walking into that crate, we were able to pick it up. As long as we can hit one enemy with it, it won't disappear. So you can miss and get a second chance with it. And there are some enemies that will give us weapons when we pick those up. We can do a lot more damage with our punches and kicks. Like one or two hits compared to five or six to finish an enemy off. And when you... Oh, that's right. I did mention the finisher already. Well, there it is again. In case you wear an enemy down enough, you'll be able to put him in the finisher. And I want to see if there's anything. No, I, I can't open that locker, sadly. You want to be, be sure to punch stuff in the environment because you never know when you might actually find something. Pretty sure I wasn't able to get anything in that lo in that dresser drawer anyway, but it wouldn't hurt to check. And I wish these guys would just drop some pipes or something. Like here. Now we have a weapon now. B A and B will let us swing the weapon. And if you're anywhere out an enemy's anywhere outside of the hitbox for the weapon, they won't get hit. Plus, you cannot run while carrying a weapon, sadly. So you can only move at this speed like I am now. Also, all the controls I just show I just mentioned. That's it. I mean, you can do, do some running attacks, too. But other than that... That's pretty much all you can do. You can't... It's not even like Streets of Rage where you can walk into an enemy, grab them, and then do some knees, do a body vault, and then do a suplex from behind them. No. Everything I've shown off is all you can do in this game. So the control does not have a lot of variety to, to it and leave something to be desired. Anyway, we finally left level 1 and we are now in level 2 of the parking garage. And apparently I had to move left and then up in order to get out of there. Want to avoid the steam that comes out of these vents. And you want to beat this guy up and hopefully... Hopefully we can take his weapon too. The heads-up display at the bottom is pretty self-explanatory. To the, to the very left is our character, the number of lives we have. And to the, to the right of our lives is a little super meter of sorts. When you fill that up, we can do a stunner on, or a finisher on our opponents. Below all that is, the, is your health. And you may notice that I've been being stunned at times. If I'm at five units or less, I can get caught and stunned like this and even die, apparently. That was not what I was wanting. It's possible to get through this game on one life. You just gotta be able to mash on the buttons when you're in stun lock. You'll have to mash A and B like mad in order to get your, get your enemy energy back up. Which is a pain to do in this game. And there's that can I was talking about that did the most health replenishment of all the items you can pick up. You start out with four lives. It's not five like the game wants you to think. If you lose, if it says one down there and you die, the game is over. You get a password and you get to continue. Thankfully, this is a pretty easy game to get through despite the fact that it's a poopy game. But other than that, yeah, it's not a good one either. Also, I forgot to mention the weapons. If you get hit and knocked down, you lose that weapon forever. It's not like Streets of Rage where if you lose it three times, it's gone. No, you, you lose it as soon as you drop it once. I also forgot to mention that enemies sometimes come out of doors, so you want to watch for that door opening sound sometimes too. Anyway, we've walked onto a floor platform that got us out of the parking garage and well, rather, we're in the parking garage, but I want to think there's like a sky above wherever it is that we are. For some reason. After taking care of some parking attendants and some corrupt security guards with some tasers, that can really do a bit of damage if you're not careful. 
We'll be on our first boss battle in no time. And thankfully, the weapons do give us a little bit of range, but... I'm not quite sure if it's ever enough. At least I'm nearly at full health here. That's mostly because I died. And as soon as we get to this new area, we lose our weapon, unfortunately. And we run into the rock, placing Stephanie in this limo. And apparently the Undertaker is helping him. Well, whoever put Stephanie in the limo, which is the rock in this case, that'll be your first boss battle of sorts. And they fight mostly like you. So... This battle is going to be mostly you and your opponent here trading punches. Thankfully, I had a special ready so I could hit this guy with a loose death press. Apparently, I can only do it on the other wrestlers and not on any of the normal generic enemies. Oh, you got to be kidding me. I ran out of energy there. And this is pretty much all you have to do to beat the um, other enemies here. All the other wrestlers. Apparently you have to get them in stun lock. Like here. And I'm doing a very horrible job of it. Come on, there we go. Now he's in stun lock. Apparently you kind of have to get lucky. And just trade punches with them. I mean, I've tried moving around, but even then, the other wrestlers eventually destroy me. So I just have to do it like that and hopefully get lucky. Anyway, level three is the street fight. First new enemy we meet here are these guys in black and green who look strangely like Terry Funk. Not sure why that is. Also, there's a uh, another guy with a stick. Thanks for our new weapon. He goes down. We also have these female gangsters that also try to kick at us, but again, we have a weapon. Did I hit the... Yeah, I did hit the mailbox. I'm going to go back just to be safe. Yeah, I hit the mailbox. I forgot there was an apple in there and I didn't want it. There's a picture of the rock that right there. And you have to climb this ladder in order to continue on, which means you're going to have to lose your weapon. After climbing up these ladders, you'll be doing some fighting on the roof. Thankfully, we got a nightstick there, or a pipe, or whatever it is. And unfortunately, we're going to have to drop it again to go down these ladders. And apparently, you got to center yourself on these things real well, or else you're not going to climb down, climb up or down these things. Apparently, climbing down on these is a lot harder than climbing up them. And that trash can works basically the same way as the crate. Throw it at enemies once, and if it hits, it disappears. Sadly. And I couldn't hit her because with the weapon because she was too close. Awesome! Thankfully, I managed to get another weapon. Really do not like this game, and I will be. Oh, I forgot you can actually climb this tree. I'm about to say, why did I lose my weapon? But yeah, there's an apple there that gives you one point of health if you need it. Not sure why you'd want the apple, but then again, every unit of health really helps in this game. And once we see the entrance of the metro, we can go down. And do the subway. I'm going to go ahead and do this level. And once I make it to level 5, I'm going to call it quits and leave that for another, for the next episode. I will be playing as all four characters, by the way. Because I like all four characters. They're all pretty cool. I definitely grew up with the Attitude Era. So, yeah. And after finding a few more bad guys, we finally get in the subway. And then we gotta deal with this guy. 
this guy will shoot at you through his briefcase. And he usually drops a health replenishing item whenever you beat him up. Using a running kick or a running attack with this with the with the briefcase guys really helps. Because they can do a ton of damage fairly quickly. They can also get you in the stun lock just like that, and I can't believe I let so many of those guys pop up at once. Your best bet is to just go through this stage slowly. Do not at all rush through this. Also, I managed to hit two guys with the center at once. I've never seen that in a Let's Play of this game, and I've never done it in a practice run. That's interesting. But thankfully, now that I have a weapon again, I want to make sure that I don't lose the thing. So again, I'm going to have to be very careful here. Try not to get two of these guys. Oh, man. And apparently me talking and playing this game at the same time causes me to die on stage four, amazingly. Now, thankfully, you have infinite continues with this game. And the passwords are really simple. It's just four numbers, one through four, and you got four slots. You can basically get anywhere in the game and do even battles you usually wouldn't be able to do in story mode with this feature. So yeah, just doing everything trial and error, you'll be able to know where every password will take you. Now if I continue, where does that take me? Does that take me back to the beginning? Oh, it takes me back to the subway. I was wondering about that. That's good to know. So now I gotta take care of these guys again. Let's see if I can use the range of my punch here a little better. And thankfully we managed to get another weapon again. Okay, come on. As long as you're not right in front of them, they can't hit you with that. And thankfully, I managed to get the dashing kick on him, so... I was able to take him down right away. Also, I'm not getting any health replenishment items from these guys at all. I'm guessing it is random, then. I just managed to start playing this the other day be just because I was curious about how bad this game was. and From what I can tell, it's pretty darn bad. Not a lot of variety in controls. Really easy to lose all your health. Really easy to die if you don't know what you're doing or if you're not careful at all. And I just... Uh, and I hate these guys. Die already! Oh, good. He gave me that. Good. Now, I still have some energy to take on The Undertaker. Whoever got away in the limo before the first... for the first, first uh, boss battle, you'll be taking them on here in the Metro. And apparently the game would not let me move. So I got jumped a little bit by, the, by Taker there. And apparently he can do Last Ride. Pretty much the same way that the rock can do either the either the rock bottom or the spine buster. It's kind of tell the hard to tell what he's doing. And it's kind of hard to get out of stun lock with him. It's kind of hard to move out of the way. All right, got to line myself up with him again. If I can get out of stun lock, that'd be great. And unfortunately, I couldn't without losing all of my health there. 
Now I'm just sitting here trading blows with him and I'm not doing a very good job at it. <sighs> Man, I am not liking this game at all. I thought by, by trapping him in this corner, maybe I'd have some better luck, but apparently not. Hit him already! Come on! There we go! Finally, loose as press! Ugh. Now that we've beaten Taker, we try to get some information out of him as to where Stephanie is. We find out she's in Titan Tower, which is misspelled Titan Towers here. I could be wrong though, but well, we're headed straight to WWF headquarters. This is not the E quite yet. And I will be saving any future demises for the next video. So join me next time where I go through WWF headquarters and hopefully save Stephanie. Until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. I'm not looking forward to this.